Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're having a fantastic Saturday. Welcome back to Who's Your Hardware and let's just jump into it. Yeah, you guys like that? I uh, I may have uh, been watching some uh, Philly D lately. So today I want to actually talk about the i5-8400 and the stock cooler that it ships with. We already know that Intel ships some pretty terrible coolers with their processors, at least the ones that actually still get stock coolers, and the 8400 is no exception. Now this six core chip will be uh, being tested on a few different stress tests, both uh, uh, Prime95, Ida64, and I think I might even gone through an Intel burn test just to give it uh, sort of a few different ways of looking at this, and we'll see how well the uh, stock cooler actually performs in a worst case scenario. Now the test setup that it's gonna be run in is a fairly well ventilated, just standard ATX case. Um, I think it's from a, it's a deep cool chassis, uh, but it has a couple of intake fans on the front that have good airflow going through there. So uh, this is a case where uh, you will get solid airflow over the processor. So if you have a small form factor PC that might not have the same level of airflow, your results may vary. Also, the system is being run with the default uh, BIOS settings, the optimized defaults. There's no reason to mess with them because uh, first of all, I don't think most people that get this chip will, but also because it's a locked processor, I really don't see the point point in uh, getting into the BIOS and messing with a whole lot of those settings just to maybe get a little bit of better thermals out of it, maybe a slightly uh, bit of better performance if you're willing to bump the base clock, which you can, but just barely on this processor. So I guess let's go ahead and head out to the uh, test setup and take a look at this guy under full load. So this is the test system that we're working with today. We actually have two intake fans uh, behind this uh, dust filter shroud. Um, it has pretty good uh, airflow through there. There's really nothing to hinder uh, air from going through the mesh. It's also been uh, recently cleaned. This case actually hasn't been used a whole lot. We also have more mesh up here where air can flow through. And here's a look at the inside of the chassis. We have one stake of DDR4 RAM. I didn't feel like taking both out of my main system. There is the stock cooler with the i5-8400 under it. And in case you're worried or curious or whatever, that is a GTX 1050 Ti in the test setup. Now there are a pair of exhaust fans on the top of the chassis, but they are not plugged in, so they are just idle. So uh, any exhaust air is just radiating out of the top and you can actually feel it. And then there is no, can't really see around the back here, but there is also no fan in the back as well. So really we're relying on that positive air pressure from those two intake fans to allow air to radiate out of the top of the case, which really shouldn't be a bad method. Like I said, it's pretty warm just sort of radiating out, which tells me that that's uh, working just fine. Now, as we see here, we have 100% uh, on all six cores. We can go ahead and minimize the task manager. And this is the IDA64 stress test. Uh, it's actually been running for about 23 minutes here. And as you see over here, we're seeing core temperatures in the 70s, anywhere from the low to the mid 70s. Of course, those temperatures will bob up and down as it goes along, but it looks like these temperatures are more than in check for this particular system. And again, if it's a smaller form factor PC you're gonna be looking at, then these temperatures will uh, likely be a little bit higher, but at least with a full tower system, they are just fine with IDA. So next we're gonna move on to Prime 95. So we've been running Prime 95 for a while now, and this bump in the middle you see here uh, those temperatures were as high as the mid 70s, maybe closer to the upper 70s in some cases for just a second or two, but nothing really to be concerned about, especially considering these are like your worst case scenario uh, temperatures. They're nothing to be concerned about. Unless you're rendering very frequently with this processor, it's really never going to see temperatures this high um, on the cores. So again, fully within check with just this stock cooler. Now let's move on to Intel burn test. Okay, so we're gonna run the burn test now on the uh, oops, the high preset here. Um, and that's really the only thing from the stock settings on the burn test that I've changed. So we're gonna go ahead and click start and see just how well this thing goes. Okay, so we have in fact passed uh, the burn test, which I knew was gonna be the case. Uh, if we go ahead and minimize this, those peaks, the highest temperature individually that I saw there was about 90 degrees. I think 89 was the actual readout in IDA 64. So again, those are very high temperatures. It's not something you'd want to run 24-7 at that temperature by any means, but 
Because this is Intel burn test, we're talking about like worst case scenario in the world possible between these three stress tests. You're just not going to see temperatures like that in real world use, especially if gaming is the most intensive thing you do. So if you are a gamer planning on getting the i5-8400, I will leave links in the description down below to that processor. And I would also say go ahead and save the $20, $30, $40 you would spend on a cooler and get better overall components, whether that be better storage or a better graphics card in the system because you don't really need to spend that money up front unless you're in a very small form factor case, in which case, depending on the airflow, it might be worth it. But then again, it also might not. It'd be something that I would highly recommend you testing for yourself.